Humana Story. Humana Story was built out of the need for human companionship, a togetherness that only comes from people helping others. We wanted to be able to tell our stories and share our expressions with everyone who needs them. By us telling our stories, we're able to share that moment that forever changed who we are. But the idea is not just to tell our story, but to share the journey in how we overcame that moment in our lives, allowing others to read and see the story and connect to the one sharing. Most people want to tell the horrid things, but fail to share the accomplishments. At Humana Story, we are not those people. We are strong, the winners, we are the achievers. We believe that sharing our experiences will help someone out there in the same situation and allow them to connect with others that have already conquered their struggle. We give the resource within our stories to help those who otherwise would fall. The help to stand up and face what is in front of them without fear or doubt. We believe everyone has the ability to succeed in life. If you are alive on this little rock hurtling through the endless void we call the universe, you are a Humana story. How much of one is up to you? And welcome to another exciting episode of Humana Story Live's Coffee with Humana Story, episode number 51. I am joined by Blackbeard's Men, and if you'd like to join in on the conversation as well, simply log into our current Humana Story Live thread and give us your best shot. If they're good, I'll read them on the air. And if they're bad, Blackbeard's Men will be more than happy to read them on the air. Our sponsored music of the day was actually contributed by They Lie Ohio and can be found at HumanaStory.com. Coffee with Humana Story is the unscripted show whose theme is created by members, for members, and involves Humana Story community members from around the world. Who knows who will be next? We have two unfortunate souls with us today, Peter Pan and Tinker Bell. And if you can't find the show, you're probably using a hook in the stratosphere somewhere off grid. Okay, I just have to point out that we are on a flat Friday episode, which is, you know. That doesn't mean there's no stratosphere. Oh, I guess you're right. So today we are answering questions <laughs> from our Twitter account and we'll be using the chat. Uh, these questions can be answered throughout the show, and as always, if you love snail mail, PO Box 712-151, Santee, California, 92072. We have a Life in Review episode coming up May 7th at 8 p.m. We will be talking to the Fobles. If you like voicing your opinion, you can do so with a dedicated theme. Speaking of which, today's theme is Fantastic Friday 13. Flat Friday 13, but it's a special theme. It's about Captain Hook. And the question of the day is, do you believe that Captain Hook's ship is real? The reason being, and we have to ask this question, <laughs> is because they believe they found Captain Hook's ship, and they're about 80% to 100% that they found it, the HMS Endeavor. It was found off of Rhode Island, Newport Harbor. And the source was CBS's internet link. So, uh, hey, Tinkerbell and Peter Pan, what do you guys think? Sorry, wait, James. wait, which one am I? Which one am I? Well, <laughs> yeah, that's what I got. Well, okay, well, you, there's, I, there's a very big, depending on which one you choose. What do you want to be? Badly. Well, uh, you know, if I you can know choose, I'm choosing now and I'm Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You know, Sergeant is a Tinkerbell. He's upbeat, he's like a cheerleader. I am wearing a yellow princess dress. Fine. There you have it. Yeah, I have that <laughs> recorded. Actually, it's not queued up know, right now. But... I know in the last episode you had me saying that, which was... <laughs> yes. Okay, so uh. we're going to dive right on into this episode. I actually did a What Brian Thinks question everything. It regarded gravity, and we have a few questions and that were answered. Yeah, we have some comments here from that show. From Grumpy Welshman, I'm interested in if the flat and if the Earth is flat or round, and there are things I cannot explain on both. If the Earth is a globe and spinning at a thousand miles per hour, why is there not less water at the poles? I suppose this ties in with gravity. 
If I soak a sponge ball and spin it fast on a rope, the water expels around its theoretical equator and moves from its theoretical poles, the string. Why does the Earth not have a similar effect? Even if gravity is real and the moon does cause the tides, there should be more water around the equator and less or none at the poles. Yes, you're absolutely right. I'm sorry, you're absolutely right. Just like uh, Saturn's rings. You know, you have that band, if you believe in Saturn, you've got that band around the center of rocks and ice and whatever else they call it, and it's spinning around the center. Uh, if <clears throat> the Earth is spinning a 1,000 miles an hour, then yeah, there should be no water at the North or South Pole if it is a sphere. Some of that, that water should be shifted down. And I'm, I'm not saying that all the water would be spinning around the equator like this giant you know, mountain of, of uh, fluid. But you definitely wouldn't have anything in the North and South Poles, and science can come back and say, oh, no, 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 gravity counteracts the centrifugal force completely, but I don't buy it. So, there you go. All Next. right, and Angelo N. answered with, because of two reasons. One, the Earth spins at a constant velocity. When you start spinning the sponge ball, you apply an acceleration. And two, because the, centrifug the centrifugal force on the Earth is minimal compared with gravity. It's around 1 to 300 of the gravitational force. That's why it's not true that people would be crushed at the poles due to the absence of centrifugal force, as many people say. Hmm. Interesting, but I like my answer better. Well, that's so. okay. Thalai, Ohio also had one. Hey, uh, go ahead and read Thalai, Ohio's. So if a sniper adjusts for the Coriolis effect and the bullet is moving at 2,000 feet per second, then an airplane would definitely have to account for it moving slower, but they don't. Also, if I'm at the equator and weigh myself on a scale, then move to the North Pole, my weight should be different accounting for Earth's spin. But that's not what we get. You are right, Captain Humana. Science is not consistent enough. And how dare you ask questions? <laughs> my girlfriend wanted me to ask, are you guys playing? And everybody loves a room in a reunion show. Thanks, bud. <laughs> nice. Nice. And, and, <laughs> Think uh, you're funny, and, don't you? Uh, and, yeah, and good, good. good comments by the way uh, the uh, oh. sniper does not account for the Coriolis effect never has and one of the statements that I read on my testimonial shows was that a Marine Corps sniper trained for three years says not even in the manual uh, and you know, that's just what that's that's just the, the the least amount of distance that any of the military guys that I was talking to were, were referring to you, you talk about the artillery guys they're shooting at 20 30 miles the tank guys the missile guys the air force guys nobody is plugging in the coriolis effect into any firing solution uh and also uh what you mentioned christina was th that yes wouldn't you weigh slightly different at the north pole as opposed to the equator if if the earth is spinning a thousand miles at the equator but zero miles an hour at the north pole if you took a hundred pound weight from the equator to the north pole it should weigh slightly more because yep. there's no centrifugal force at all. No, I'm not saying it would be 10 pounds or even a pound, but it'd be measurable. We have very, very precise instruments. So show me. I don't think that test has ever been done. I think it's a good one. And I would say, what do you think, Doug? But uh, your your evil counterpart there <laughs> is the one that came up with that question. So, so yeah. <laughs> now, you were talking about beautiful comments. And uh, <clears throat> I want you to know, as you know, we like to go through all the comments uh, that we get. Now, these comments that we're going to be getting here come from episode 50. Um, and I wanted to save these beautiful comments for you, Mark. Uh, okay. Some of these came from your page and some of these came from mine. So let's, uh, let's have the great comment reader of the Orient. All right. Go uh, ahead the Orient and begin. Uh, another fun that. one, guys <laughs> and gals. <laughs> Gal. Who's it from? Oh, uh, what's that say? Good stems? God, I can never get this right. <laughs> Good say who it's from. Yeah, it does. Do, do go on, M. Keith. <laughs> it's good times for all. Oh, okay. Never mind. Good times for all. Okay. You were uh, close. Another fun one, guys and gal. You are all a great bunch. I share you with my family this week, and they really enjoy the show. I was thinking of making a comment, but really big, hard to pronounce words. 
What is this? <laughs> Mr. Epke? Oh, boy, I didn't see that one coming. But I wasn't sure if if that would be considered considered forward. I wanted, I wouldn't want you to think I was poking fun or anything. If you think that he wouldn't be offered by it, please let me know. It was nice to hear more from him. So funny and lighthearted. Thanks for doing this show. I look forward to it every weekend now. Keep on the great job spreading the good word. Take care all. Now, before you go on to the next one, Brandon for Brandon Frazier. Oh my God! <laughs> oh, hey. uh, Here we go. Okay. What yeah. Freudian okay, thing so, was that? Yeah. All right. So uh, Jeff Jeff Frazier, uh, he likes to write wordy stuff, and I think he's getting more wordy as he knows he's reading. So go ahead and uh, read Jeff Frazier's. Okay, Jeff Frazier's. Um, okay, as. As always, this is a great show. Keep up the good work. Got a little smiley face there. Okay. With regard to the target... Did you just describe the smiley face? Yeah. With the regard to the, the uh, target restroom issue, here's my take. Unlike other national stores like Roger that simply close to encourage... <laughs> Use of their single Kroger. occupants. Kroger. It's Kroger. Oh, Kroger. Okay. Oh, well, I can't, I, you know, I can't pronounce it. Yeah. Okay. Now you got me all screwed up. Simply <laughs> close the <laughs> encourage use of their single occupant unisex, unisex facilities. Target placed urinals in the women's restroom. That way I see... They are encouraging people who are still men to go into the ladies' room and open urination or open urinate in front of everybody. <laughs> if someone can't stand up while retrieving himself, then he is still male and has no business doing his business around women and girls. The worst part of this all is that Target attempted to solve the problem never existed. All of us at one time or another, we found ourselves wondering about certain individuals who entered the public restroom but didn't resume the stick figure figure on the door. In other words, we're all experienced uh, DJ, dude. I love you, man. <laughs> A uh, surreal feeling that makes us question our immediate reality and wonder if... It is actually we who are suddenly out of place or unwittingly subject to some mad scientist laboratory. Okay, so, Doug, <laughs> you only have a minute to answer. Go. Can't answer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, oh All right. I, didn't, I didn't know I was shopping at Rogers. <laughs> Oh my! God. Tell me about the men who were retrieving themselves in, in the bathroom. <laughs> they, they were they were relieving themselves. Mark. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. See, I, I, I'm horrible with words. I like retrieving better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, going the opposite way. <laughs> you, my friend, are a kind soul. Okay. So. <laughs> All right, so listen, Mark Sargent, if you do not read your comments, I will make this happen every week. And we are almost out of time, guys, so we'll be back after the break. Life is a fickle word, an even more ironic moment in time. No one really understands how it began or where it will end. To some, life is to be spent living to its fullest while some others prefer the solitude of a mountaintop in seclusion. The one thing we are aware of is that life is a very fragile moment in the slipstream of time that can only be described as eternity. Your life should be spent doing what it is that you feel you should do with yours, as it is a short remembrance in the grand scheme 
of those who are close to you. How you live now will be how people remember who you were. So live well. Come join us May 7th at 8 p.m. We will be talking to the Fobles about a relative they have by the name of Jeff Joseph, who went missing June 21st, 2014, and has not been heard from since. We will learn how it is to cope with the loss of a loved one and what you can do if you are ever stuck in the same situation. You can join in on the live discussion at humanastory.com. That's H-U-M-A-N-A-S-T-O-R-Y dot com. Simply click listen live May 7th at 8 p.m. You will also be able to tweet your questions live to the full board using Twitter at humanastory. H-U-M-A-N-A-S-T-O-R-Y. For further information on this event, come to humanastory.com. And we are in segment two, episode 51. And we had Mr. Emke finishing off some of Mark Sargent's and my own... uh, comment sections of pretty much anywhere we have any kind of social media and uh we are on christopher millington that's right christopher millington and uh go ahead mark let's uh finish off what we've got okay uh christopher millington oh my i don't know what that's got some stars in there freaking god (laughs) This show is so damn hilarious to listen. I was in the process of removing my front strut assembly on my car when underneath it and ended up hearing Mark read out other people's comments. And I laughed so hard that I lost my concentration while trying to undo the last bolt from the strut assembly to remove it. And I ended up dropping the whole damn thing on my freaking crotch. <laughs> <laughs> that was not only that was not very funny at all, nor did it feel good. So I wanted to thank you awesome guys, Christina, for almost killing my nuts. <laughs> now I'll be walking like a disabled person for a bit. <laughs> and, and, and then we have Nathan Oakley. Nathan Oakley said, just watch Brian's channel. Good show. Uh, other Mark cracks me up. Now, now, Mark, this one's kind of interesting. Razon1011 actually picked up on your comment. I don't know if you guys even caught it. On the last show, when we... I, just, I can't remember when exactly it was. I just remember hearing Mark say it. Because he says things under his breath in the background. He said, ha ha, at around 4010, you said, Mr. Emke, you said, I've seen things in the bushes. That's when we were talking about the Vietnam. Remember, you were like, Mr. Sergeant, you were saying, I've been there, man. And I was like, oh, I've seen know things. Oh, you know how many Vietnam vets it take to change a life? Yeah. Home. And the answer is you don't you don't you you weren't there, man. Yeah, and then I've he said things. yeah, and then he said I seen things in the bushes. And, <laughs> and uh so those were the comments from uh last week. So what do you guys think on uh Captain, Captain Hook, Hook? Captain man. Hook and uh them finding his, his well, ship. I mean technically if they found the ship that doesn't you know, you're you're it, it's kind of mixing fantasy and fact in that case because you're not reinforcing by by finding Captain Hook's ship. You're not saying that Peter Pan and Tinkerbell were real. You're just saying they found the the boat, right? Kind of mm. like Noah's Ark. How do you thing. know? Do you think it might be based off of reality though? What that Peter Pan the ship is real? No, Peter no, Pan. No, no, Peter Pan is no. <laughs> Why can't it be oh, no. based off reality? No, it's no, it's a it's a Disney story. Peter Pan and the but, Lost Boy. What? But it's not but no, 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 man. No, 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 no. Peter Pan was not originally Disney. Peter Pan was okay. actually. They bought the rights to it. Yeah, they bought the rights to it. So it was a book from a long time ago. Most of their stories are actually written by authors from long, long ago. 
No, no pun intended. I'm... Many, okay. many moons ago. Well, I do have an interesting fact on the whole ship thing, anyhow. I mean, the HMS Endeavor was actually logged in the records as Lord Sandwich. <laughs> so I'm guessing that was a common thing. I have no response to that. <laughs> Lord Sandwich. No. Yeah, well, what do you think, Doug? Uh, no Doug, response. I'm with give Mark. me your answer, Doug. I don't have one for you, buddy. What do you mean you don't I have I really don't. Say what? No sandwich one? All right. I, I, thought, I thought Disney was Peter Pan. Peter Pan was Disney. I never knew it was written somewhere else. Sam, I had no idea. I, I didn't know that until I started working there, and they started brainwashing me into everything. And that's Oh, when you work they, there. Well, that's how I found out most of the information that I found out. But it... Yeah, I didn't know. Most of their movies are based off of earlier, early, I don't know, I keep saying earlier things, but they're earlier, uh, like, books and plays and stuff. Hmm. And that kind of destroyed it for me when I found that out, because then I wanted to go search out the real books and stuff like that. So what do you guys think on gravity? Since I wanted that question answered anyway. And what I was referring to when I when I asked the question originally was if you're on a motorcycle and the faster you go, the more the bike wants to stay upright. And people are like, well, it's, it's you know, it's all about gyroscopes and stuff. But I'm like, yeah, but it, it holds the bike to the ground, right? I mean, that's the idea yeah. behind the gravity. So what's, yeah. what is your thoughts on, on the faster you go, the more you want to stay upright? And it's not because of anything other than, uh, I want to say gravity, but... It's, it's the faster you go, you can let go of the handlebars, you can stand up on the bike, and you can, if you try to lean to turn, or if you try to do anything, it's virtually impossible at really high speeds. Isn't it the same way a, gy- oh, what is it, a gyroscope works? or? That's kind of what, what some of the people were and saying. That, isn't that what's happening? That spins and it, it wants to hold right, correct? I don't know. And, I mean... it would, and it would be trying to hold right towards the gravity of Earth, right? Isn't that the idea? Mm-hmm. So yeah, like, but are you trying to define gravity at this point? Yeah, so what at this actually point, is gravity? I don't know what it is. Nobody knows. I don't, yeah, I don't think they know either. So, no, science no. doesn't know. I mean, they, they're going to say it's mass, but it's really, from my point of view, as far as the flat side is concerned, it's no different than, you know, even the flat side doesn't know. I call it electro um, um, magnetism, you know, a molec- on a molecular level that can be built in like what we do with simulations. When gravity, when we have to build gravity into a program now we just build it out we say okay we want this object to fall from you know from here to to the ground at a certain rate and you can make that rate anywhere you want and you can apply it to any object you want so if you apply it to all objects that are on the ground that's that's what gravity is so how come no one uh, no one in in the movement yeah has even questioned anything about gravity is it because science doesn't even know the answers yeah, yeah. I mean, if an astrophysicist cannot adequately explain it to the layman, what what are we going to do? I mean, you know, we're we're taking. I think everyone's taking shots in the dark when it comes to gravity. I know that some people say, "Oh, it's buoyancy and stuff like that." Uh, I I think buoyancy. I don't I don't think buoyancy completely can solve some of the some of the gravity questions. But I don't know why. Uh, didn't so, Tesla? <clears throat> what was Tesla's? feel like when when he towards electromagnetism too yeah or? yeah he said that everything was electromagnetic so that sort of fit into that all right now there you go if if they're hiding what he's saying which i've researched that out then i tend to believe him <laughs> you know when they're starting to hide things then you know why they're hiding them yeah and and a slightly uh you know more eccentric guy uh, eric dollard he was going down that same road, only he didn't really deal with gravity as much as he dealt with everything else. He said everything else was just this giant electric system. So who was Eric Dollard? Eric Dollard? Uh, look him up somebody. He's still he's still alive right now. He's got this great little rant where he's sitting in a car, which I think he was living in at the time, where he's really good at electricity. I'll give you that. They're saying, oh, he's the next Tesla. He's not the next Tesla. But he's a very, very interesting guy, and he was saying that everything's electric and the sun is just a transformer. He goes, he goes, there's no fusion there. There's nothing there. It's just transforming from another dimension. He goes, I have no idea what powers it. Nobody does. And uh, it's, he's, so it's, it's obvious, but the scientists aren't going to talk about it because, you know, science is this real tight-knit club, and they, you know, you don't want to 
ostracize yourself from the academic community. They want to right. keep it if a he's mystery. Ro- yeah, he, they won't let him rock the boat. There's no way. Okay, so what are your guys' thoughts on uh, what's been going on? I, I, I'm going to touch on it because obviously it's a big thing. What do you think of what's been going on with uh, the leaked uh, footage that you have? Oh, around thanks, there. Man. You didn't think I was going to bring <laughs> it up, did you? Yeah, hey, I tried to give you guys time to talk about gravity, but no. I don't know. I'll I'll address it on Strange World tonight, but I'll I'll mention it in passing here, and that is uh, since you know not everybody listens well, to both this and and Strange World. Look, you know, from an academic standpoint, you watch the tape. You know, I, I've been cu- trying to come up with an analogy today as as I was outside, uh, which was it's kind of like the movie Seven. You remember the movie Seven with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman? Oh yeah. yes, about mm-hmm. that serial killer. Well, you people forget that in that movie there were no acts of horrible violence. It was all implied. It, it, it left it to your imagination. You never saw what happened, but everybody feared the worst, which was why it was such a perfect movie. Same thing. Same with this tape. It's like, look, it it showed nothing. Hey, you know, all it showed. I mean, yeah, I was sitting there on a bed and no shirt on, you know, getting a back rub, but there was no innuendos. Nobody was kissing anybody. There was, you know, I wasn't tied down. It, it was nothing like that. And, you know, it cut away. It was, it was brief and to the point. And there was a lot of people. And I, I, again, I am sorry if I offended the Christian community in some way, shape, or form, but I have never been married and never had kids. So I don't think infidelity is, is in there either. So. The, yeah. Amen. Jesse yep. Spots, calm down. Yeah, right? <laughs> if, 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 I if, felt bad. I, I got to say, I felt bad because Jesse was leaving me that message as he made that video. And so I got the message before he put the video up. And I was like, come on, man. It's, it's not it's not as bad. But again, everyone has their own level. Some people said that, oh, nothing happened and Mark just went to sleep. And other people said that Patricia was actually in a director's chair behind. Oh, you know, God. Are you God. serious? Like, what the wow. fuck? She's in Houston. So, right. whatever. It's, Come uh, on. I, I do appreciate the concern from everybody, and I am sorry that I, I let some people down. I kind of felt like um, Ron Burgundy. You remember the movie um, Anchorman with Ron Burgundy did the first one? Oh, yeah. When he, when he said, when he swore on camera, he said, F you, San Diego. <laughs> right, and then his uh, his assistant got so upset and came up to us. How could you do it, Ron? How could you do it? You know, he was crying for like five right. minutes. Like that that's what I feel like right now because people have been, have been coming up. It's how, why, you know, say it isn't so, Joe. I was like, oh man, yeah. thank thank you, man. I, I mean, yeah. it was, seriously, yeah, I don't. Again, I'll discuss it tonight, but it's just for us. Seriously, you know, I'm I'm good friends with those two, and. You know, flat Earth friendship. It was a cool mixer. I wish, honestly, I wish there were more people in the room because it, it probably wouldn't have looked as seedy or maybe more right. seedy. I don't know. Yeah. So to all those guys out there, what you guys wouldn't have done it, or would you just not filmed it? <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> yes. I, and I, I exactly. had the British guy that peg leg that gave me some grief in a video, and and I said, you know what? You're you're right. I at the very least, I probably should have been more more discreet. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Oh, I, hopefully, well, I, I'm going to do a hangout with him soon, I think. And, and with, clear the air. Bit, with, so. with who? I uh, mean, what, what did Mark do? Cheat on Flat Earth? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, I mean, they, a couple of people didn't mention. So, didn't okay. Mention Patricia, well, let me, let me, let me, let me reiterate. So what he's talking about, Mark, uh, Emke, is, yeah. uh, he was in a room being filmed by one woman. He was in there with two women, basically. Oh, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I like There's that. the whole thing. <laughs> Thanks. He There's was, the reaction. I'm looking for. He was dressed. Yeah, I like that. Oh, boy. Imagine it. Let his mind run with that. Thank yeah. God he don't make videos. <laughs> All right. I, I yeah, you don't want me making videos. It, it was a very there, – there were there were some laughs and drinks and smiles shared uh, by some, some good, good <laughs> flat earth people. And it was not seedy in the slightest. And uh, other than that, I really can't go into any detail. Well, that's the whole thing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up, guys. Um, <laughs> look, it's it's you were just having fun. You were at, a, at an event. You guys were all enjoying yourselves. And I don't think there was anything events. wrong with it. Well, it's, it is what it is. If people get too bitchy, you quit whining. <laughs> mm-hmm.
Mana Story thanks you for listening and your activity within our community. We hope to grow a little each day with the lives of ordinary people doing extraordinary things in life-changing events. 